Add those together, and Celtic remains a powerhouse when it comes to cash flows. In 8 out of 10 seasons, Celtic have generated cash for the club, and over the decade, that's added a million to the boys' bank account. If that's good for us, we'll f***ing take advantage of it. With another League and Cup double secured in the trophy cabinet, let's dive into the financial story of Celtic. In recent times, Celtic have had a stranglehold on Scottish football. 10 league titles in 11 seasons, as well as 13 domestic cups. That success on the pitch means just four different managers have sat in the Celtic Park dugout. Lennon, Della, Rogers, Lennon again, Postacoglu, Rogers again. But what about off the pitch? What's happening behind the scenes? Are you, are you ready? Revenue has been on a roller coaster, first rising to over 100 million in 2018, then shrinking even before the pandemic. But post COVID, the top line is on the march again. 2023 delivering 120 million, a 36% year on year increase. What fueled this surge? Let's dive into revenue streams. Note that pre-2018, Celtic presented their numbers differently, so we're focusing on the trajectory of the last six years. Matchday revenues broke 50 million for the first time, the club's historic domestic treble resulting in four additional trips to Hamden Park. At home, attendances continued to grow, the 59,000 average in 2023 the best of the decade. Next up, media revenues. These surged to 31 million, the boys' best results since 2018 driven by their first appearance in the Champions League group stages for five years. Retail and commercial revenues also went from strength to strength, generating 22 and 13 million respectively. Across the division, it's clear that Celtic are far ahead of the rest of the field, even Rangers. The people all around the world in bars and living rooms will be absolutely thrilled. Now let's dive into profits. The bottom line also undulates throughout the years but Celtic have generated profits in seven of the last 10 seasons, and 2023 generated over 40 million in operating profit. In fact, over the decade, the boys have averaged 8 million a year. So how have they managed this? Time for our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Steadily increasing until 2018, Celtic have kept a handle on staff costs. 2023, 61 million, only an additional 2 million increase on the wage bill of five years prior. As a proportion of revenues, Celtic look in robust health. 2023 staff costs making up just 51% of that improved top line performance. Even during COVID, Celtic's wage bill peaked at 85% of revenue. So after staff costs alone, Celtic have plenty to play with. Next up, operating costs. Whilst these have ramped up post-COVID, 2023 saw these reduced to 18 million, almost 40% lower than the year before. In this year, Celtic received 13.5 million in one-offs in the year, 10 million from insurance claims and 3.5 million in compensation. So at EBITDA level, those one-offs continue to make 2023 a standout year. Third up, stadium and facilities. Celtic's steady investment mean these have remained around 3 million a year over the decade. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. There's plenty of green here, with Celtic generating net transfer profits in seven of the last 10 seasons, driven by a raft of sales such as Victor Wanyama, Fraser Forster, Virgil van Dijk, Moussa Dembele, Kieran Tierney, Jeremy Frimpong. This transfer strategy has helped keep Celtic in the black seven out of 10 seasons. And as far as margin goes, Celtic have averaged 10% operating profits over the decade. But what about financial fair play? As Celtic compete in European competitions, they must abide by squad cost ratios. Here, we take revenue and profits from player sales to give total income. Alongside this, we compare playing staff costs, estimated at 85% of total staff costs, and add the cost of transfer fees. Divide one by the other, and we have a squad cost ratio. Celtic's 48% is well within UEFA's ultimate target of 70%, so no fears here. And if top line revenues continue to grow, could Celtic bolster their playing squad investments to try and improve their form in European competitions? So I think that's the that's still the big development that this team have to uh, have to make. Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. 
As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, shows the same roller coaster we've seen for revenue and profits. However, cash in the last two years means that over the decade, Celtic have made 88 million in cash from operations. Now let's shift our attention back to transfers. Do those transfer profits translate to cash? Indeed they do. Celtic have brought in transfer cash seven out of 10 seasons. Overall, that's another 16 million brought in. Add those together and Celtic remains a powerhouse when it comes to cash flows. In eight out of 10 seasons, Celtic have generated cash for the club and over the decade, that's added 104 million to the boys' bank account. That's good for us. We'll take advantage of it. So has any funding been required? None. In fact, cash has steadily been taken out of the club over the decade, both paying down debt and dividends to shareholders. Over 10 years, 18 million has been paid out of the club. And Celtic's borrowings now stand at under 100,000 pounds at June 2023. And then we'll look to uh, flow from, uh, from the beginning of next season. So unlike many teams, Celtic looks self-sufficient and financially sound. But might they be tempted to invest further in the playing squad to become a stronger force on the European scene? Only time will tell.